What's going on guys? This is Tosker. What we are going to do is we are going to go to File, New, and we're going to start a new WPF application for our project. And in this case, we're just going to name it View Changer because what we're going to be covering today is changing views in WPF without opening a new window. So essentially we have our main window here and instead of uh, opening up a new window for a different view we're just going to change the content within the window and since we're going to be using WPF we, we want a a model view model uh, and view uh, design so we want three folders one will be called models another we are going to call view models and then our third folder is going to be our views now we are not going to be using our models folder uh, we're just going to be using view models and views uh, after that we're going to quick make a little layout because we don't want the entire thing to change especially if we want to navigate between views uh, we want at least some consistency as far as like uh, a menu bar goes so in our grid I'm going to break it up a bit so we can work with it a little better and we're gonna create some column definitions whoops okay. going to create row definitions and we're gonna want let's see how many columns we'll say five columns say five columns and five columns five rows then we want our menu bar and right now we're just working on design we're not jumping into anything too technical right now so like I said if you don't know XAML then uh, you might want to do a tutorial on that first and so we're gonna create our we're gonna make a doc panel for our menu bar so we're gonna sign that to row zero column zero and we'll probably give it a row span three, four, five. Yeah, make it five. And give it a row span of five. So all along here, and I'll make it an ugly background color just so uh, we can all see. So we got gray, an ugly gray, and this is going to be our menu bar. And we want some buttons in there, so we're going to do a stack panel. A first button give it the content of red view and we're going to do a second button give it our content of a blue view so what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up clicking these buttons and then the content over here in this white area is gonna change but in order to do that we actually first need to uh, create a content control. So, we'll do our content control. Our content is going to be, we're just going to bind it to whatever our data context is. So, when we change the data context of our video, or of our video, <laughs> when we change the data context of our view, or of our window, uh, it's going to change that entire white space. But we also need to assign this. So we'll say, yeah. Uh, so we'll say it'll be our grid row zero, our grid. Column one. We're going to give it a column span of four. 
zero span of five. So this entire area right here is where our view is going to be displayed. But first we need to actually make our views and our view models before we can start uh, working on that. So we're going to go to views and do a new, our new item and we want a user control and we're going to call this our red view. So uh, here we have our entire user control and this is what's going to be displayed in the white area from our main window and we're not really going to be doing much so we're just going to give it a background of red. And we're going to go to new item and we're going to create another user control. We're going to call this one blue view. Okay, and you might have guessed this background is going to be blue. So now we have our two views and this is all that's going to be displayed, just red and blue. But they each need their own view model as well. If we're going to change the view based on the data context, uh, you don't set the data context to the view itself. You set it to its view model. So we're going to create new class. We're going to create a couple new classes in the view models. We're going to do a red view model. Make that public. I'm not sure if that actually matters, but out of habit, I'll do that. And then I'll create a blue view model that public as well so we're going to set our data context to this and then based on what our context is based on uh, which view model it is it's going to assign the uh, appropriate view in order to do that we're going to first have to create uh, some access to our namespaces since we have them in separate folders so we're going to essentially if you if you haven't done this before uh, you can even just take note at what's being done up here for the format in creating a namespace and we're going to have our view models we're going to assign this to our you change your namespace but to our view models whoops view models folder and we're going to do the same thing except we're going to have a namespace for views view changer views so whenever we call view models and our markup it's going to go to our namespace here and then whenever we call views in our markup it's going to go to our views folder in our namespace then next what we want are we want some windows resources <sighs> window dot resources this is where we're going to store our data templates, which is going to tell our content control down here what view to access based on the data context it is bound to. So we're going to go back up to Windows Resources and we're going to create a data template. Okay, and we're going to give it a name. To access it uh, I don't think we will be accessing it in this uh, video but normally you want to give it a name we'll call it our red view our red view template okay and then we're going to say data type and set it to the type of uh, whatever we want our whatever the data context of our view model is so going to go to our view models from our access point we made up there and we're going to say when it is the red view model so whenever the data type is of the red view model we're going to set the view which is uh, again what we made up there above 
we're gonna set oh what we said views didn't we? We're gonna set our views to our red view. And we're gonna make sure we send we also send our view our data context that we're also bound to. So here we have let's see. Okay, so I often get this and it's fairly annoying. Uh, whenever you encounter this problem, usually if you go up to build and you rebuild, everything works out okay. And then we're going to copy paste. We're going to change this to our blue view template. And then when our data type is of our blue view model going to set the template to our blue view and again pass the view our data context okay so I think I got all this fairly okay and now all we have to do in order to change the view here is when we click these buttons we want it to change the data context of our window so we're going to go over here to our event handler and we're going to go to click and we're going to say red view clicked so we'll name that event and we'll jump right back real quick go to blue view and say blue view clicked so now when we click these video or when we click these buttons okay it's got uh, this is where we're going to change the data context of our window. So we're going to set our data context to a new and we're going to probably have to enter in a using here but for now we're just going to say a blue or no this is the red right a red view model and it's not going to find it if you hit control dot and enter in the using statement up here for the view models then again we're going to do data context equals a new blue view model so now that we have that set I believe actually unless I'm uh, mistaken should be kinda set and I'll, I'll go over it one more time but right now we have uh, nothing set but if we click our red button it should change our data context to the red view model thus displaying the red view if we click blue it's going to set it to the data context to the blue view model and make our view blue and you can alternate between the two if we wanted to create another one we would just create let's say Say we wanted to do another view, we could do orange view model. Okay, and we'll have to create another view. We'll call this orange view. Whoops, but we don't want that to be a class again. Uh, we want to add a new, we want it to be a user control. We'll call this orange view okay and again so we can see the difference create that go back to here and now uh, we're gonna have to create another button but also we're gonna have to make another data template as well so for now we'll do orange view set the event after orange view clicked just to set the data context equal to orange view okay so now when we click our orange view button it's going to set our data context to the orange view model so now when we run it red, our 
blue, our red, blue, and our orange. Oh, but if you see, our orange view model didn't work. And in fact, it just shows uh, the, the string value of our data context, but it's not actually displaying our view. And that's because we did not create a new data template which is what our content control is going to. So we can just copy paste a data template, create another one, orange view template. Then we're going to set it to when it's the data type of the orange view model in our view models. And then out of our views, the content will be of our orange view. And we'll also set the data context. Kind of screwed up there. We'll also set our data context to the context of uh, the orange, uh, of the data context of our window. So now we go into debug. We should have red, blue, and our orange. And you can also, uh, if you want to mess around, you can go into the views and you could, uh, you know, you could put a button in there or a uh, text box and labels and so on uh, if you want to make it look a little prettier. But for now that's just uh, how we change views in WPF. And I hope uh, the tutorial wasn't a little awkward. I'll try and get a little better. Uh, again, I've literally never done anything like this before. I'm usually the uh, the antisocial recluse, so I'm not even good at uh, talking to people who probably aren't watching this video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so whatever. Uh, I'll probably get better at it. Uh, if other than my us and ums. Uh, which I already understand is probably a problem. Uh, feel free to leave criticisms and if I move too fast, if I over explain some things or if I move too slow, a lot of the times I hate it when uh, I go to watch a YouTube tutorial and I understand the background on some things yet I have to wait on them to explain smaller things in order to explain the thing I want to know uh, often I'll, people will cater to the lowest denominator and I was just trying to quickly go through this with as little and brief explanation of things as possible uh, if you're somebody who would rather have more explanations I'd uh, be willing to do so it's just I, I try not to annoy people by over explaining things because I personally understand that it can be frustrating sometimes uh, when you go to learn a tutorial and somebody's explaining syntax to you and, and you're trying to learn something that's well beyond the level of learning syntax. So uh, I hope I did okay at least uh, even if I did it poorly I, I hope at least you learned how to do this uh, and maybe I will make another one depending on how much of a terrible one this one is but all right Hope you guys enjoyed and let me know if you want anything else, something more specific. Maybe next time we can go into uh, actually doing things in our view models and affecting our new views and our content control. But until then, thank you.